Hello everybody, welcome back. This is going to be our third and final video in the Linux Mint uh, series. Linux Mint is actually built for regular, just normal, everyday users, new users, those wanting to migrate from other operating systems such as Windows for whatever reason. And basically it does exactly what the average user needs. Uh, research has shown that the average computer user, the average person I should say, uh, they use their computer to browse the internet, check social media, uh, watch YouTube videos, that kind of thing. Um, and Linux Mint is more than capable of doing that. Pretty much every operating system is capable of doing that. In fact, most people spend more time on their phones than they do on their computer. That's why this series hasn't been overly complicated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little uh, more of a walkthrough, kind of a continuation of the previous video. Um, and show you some of the things that you can do here. Probably tasks that you won't even perform every day, but uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to ignore this video, this video right here. This is actually the video that's currently being recorded that you're watching at this point in time. So let's talk about like this uh, folder here. If we right click on it, we can open it, we can open a new tab, open a new window. These context menus look a lot like what you're already used to, especially if you're coming uh, from Windows. Copy, paste, you can add it to your favorites, you can pin it, uh, which pinning just puts it at the front of the list over here. Uh, you can actually delete it. <laughs> you can delete it. Um, once you delete it here, you could also need to like remove it from over here, right click, remove kind of thing. Um, but you can also add directories. We'll create a new folder, or my folder. And then I can also move this over here. Oh, it, that's not where I wanted it. Where'd it go? Did it go into videos? It did. Let's move that back to home. Okay. So anyway, what we're trying to do is line it up. See that blue line there? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do is line it up. There we go. Now it's over there. Awesome. Okay, so anyway, you've got your recent files here, uh, downloads, videos, that kind of thing. Uh, you can right click on any white space in here and pretty much bring up a different context menu the way you change uh, arrange items and things like that. This, If you're coming from Windows, this is all very familiar to you. Even if it doesn't look exactly the same, it's not hard to figure out what some of these buttons do simply just by pushing them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close that. That's about enough of that. Um, in the last video, we showed how to install applications. So let's learn how to uninstall. If you remember, we have Google Chrome in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and the first thing I want to do is refresh the list of packages. And what this is going to do is it's going to regenerate the cache like the screen says. Um, it takes a couple seconds, but it's gathering all the information about available packages to install, but also what's already installed. So once it populates, it goes back to this window. I'm going to hit the hamburger menu again. This time we're going to show installed applications. And this will show you the applications that have been installed. So to install Chrome, we're just going to highlight it, or click it, I should say, and then hit the Remove button. Put in our password. That is one difference between Windows and Linux, is you have to put your password in more often on Linux than you ever did on Windows. And it's just, it's for security, basically. What, what Linux is just making sure that it's really you. It's not somebody else coming along trying to uninstall or install without your permission or knowledge. That's basically all that is. Uh, it can get kind of tedious, but nothing is without ups and downs or pros and cons. So at this point, I can go ahead and reinstall it if I want, but we're not going to. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Um, if you remember in the install video, I told you that, um, actually I can get there a lot easier. Uh, I can just go ahead and hit printer and then open printers dialog. I, I told you that this was auto detected, which it was, uh, but I can right click on it. I can go into properties. Uh, I can change 
and view different uh, settings on the printer itself. I can print a test page. If I wanted to share it, I can just go ahead and hit shared. Um, once that's activated, uh, you could also publish it on the network by going into settings and then putting a check mark in publish shared printers. And what that will allow you to do is once both of those are set, is you can now print to whatever printer you have from your phone or tablet, your TV if it's capable of printing, uh, laptop, just whatever else device you have on your network, you can print to this printer with. And that's all it takes to do that. You can add printers, um, you can delete the printer. Not sure why you'd want to unless you were replacing it, but you can. If we right click on this, you could also go into edit menu. Okay. And this will allow you to determine what you want showing up in the menu itself. Like wine, we don't need any of the wine menus. We don't have any wine components installed anyway. Uh, so we can add, you can edit. And these are the individual entries in here that we're editing. Have fun trying to do that with Windows. Anyway, so if we go to all applications, this is going to list all the applications on the system. Of course, you got basic stuff like a calculator, calendar, uh, celluloid plays, uh, movies, videos. This here is your disk usage monitor. Uh, this will tell you how much is being used on that particular disk. So the root is is currently got 473.4 gigabytes available. Let's say this was full and you needed to learn where everything was, what's using all the disk space. You just go ahead and select it and it will itemize out all the directories and show you which directories is using how much space. And all of this looks normal, so obviously we don't have any problems here. But if something was full, it would show up in this uh, in this tree over here. And of course, you can dig down by clicking on the down arrows and figure out what in in USR is actually being uh, taking up all the space. Uh, let's see here. I think that's going to be. I think that's going to be about it. Oh, there was one other thing I was wanting to show you. Um, this is important for Linux Mint or anything that's based off of Ubuntu LTS. Uh, this particular version, Wilma Linux Mint 22, is actually built on the latest version of Ubuntu, which is 24.4. That means that it was released in April, because April is the fourth month, of the year 2024. So 2024.4 or 24.4 is the year 2024 in the fourth month. You'll have 24.10 which has also been released but it's not long term. Mint is built on long term distribution. So the longer time goes by the more out of date the base of the system becomes. And what they do is they'll do a refresh for a new base every two years. All right, so let's say, for example, that you bought a brand new piece of technology that just came out. Linux may or may not have the drivers for that. Uh, a case, a, a perfect example that is a real world, world case is um, Intel makes discrete graphics cards, and it's their Arc series. And their current rendition of that is Alchemist, or the A-series. And the Arc A770, it's an excellent card, and Intel plays very well with Linux. The Intel drivers are usually in the kernel, like this, this Dell that I have here. We didn't have to install any drivers for it because it uses Intel's drivers that are built into the kernel. The problem is, is the A770 uses a different chipset than the onboard chipset that I have here. So you would have to actually upgrade to a newer kernel in order to get those drivers pulled in. Well, if those drivers were created after this was released, you have to, to upgrade to a different kernel. So there is a way to do that here. And what we're looking for is, um, uh, where was it? 
I can get there from the welcome screen. Let's go. It is the update manager. Sorry, lost for words there. All right, so if we bring up the update manager, which can also be done through administration update manager. If we click on view, we can show a history of our updates. We can also get information about the system. But to my point, we can go to Linux kernels. Okay, it's, of course, it's going to show you a warning because we're talking about changing core components of the system. We hit continue. These are a list of the available uh, kernels. So 6.8.0-38 is currently installed. 0-51 is available and can actually be, uh, it's actually installed already, so that's fine. But as time goes on, these kernel versions are going to accumulate. They're, they're going to get higher and higher and higher. And in my real world scenario with the Intel card, kernel 6.1, which is the current default for, for uh, Debian stable, does not have those newer drivers. So you have to upgrade to like 6.4 or 6.5. This has 6.8 on it. So if I've installed Linux Mint straight onto that, any computer that has those drivers in it, or it would automatically detect those and use them just fine. My point though is, let's say this was an even older version and we needed the kernel version 6.8, okay? Um, or we needed kernel version 6.8.0-52. 6 as soon as it was released and available in here, you can highlight it and you can actually install it and that will solve that kernel dependency problem without having to use a different distribution or upgrade to uh, a, a testing or an experimental uh, version of Linux Mint you can still stay on the officially supported version. Anyway, so in closing, Linux Mint is actually very good for new users, uh, basic users. Um, I, I hesitate to call this an old person's distribution, but seniors can definitely use Linux Mint. It's not that complicated at all. Um, those that just simply are not tech savvy can get along with this distribution. As you can tell, we didn't get into the command line at all, at any time, which is which is a good thing for new users and those that just simply aren't interested. You can do your daily tasks without it. So anyway, Linux Mint is good for that. And what we're gonna do is move on to our, uh, our next series, which will be coming out soon. If you are, if you like these videos, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you'd like to help out this channel, in the description there is a list of hardware that I use in the creation of these videos, just some of the hardware. Uh, and there are affiliate links. Um, I do earn a small commission in total transparency. I do earn a small commission. It does not change the price. That commission is covered by Amazon and uh, is not passed on to you. Uh, but it is a small token of gratitude and thanks for uh, producing these videos. Anyway, we will see you in the next series.